So Skylar, I'm going to start backwards <laughs> because the question on everyone's minds is if there's going to be more Zoe. So have you heard anything? Is there anything brewing? Um, I don't know if there's anything brewing. I haven't heard anything other than the demand for more. So yeah. if anyone's listening, I think, I think we should make it happen. Yeah. And you would be like ready and willing to, to do it? Okay. Um, so first of all, I wanted to ask you, how festive of a Christmas person are you? Are you the person that's like blasting the music and decorating? Or are you like more chill about Christmas? Uh, I am a Jew about it. So I celebrate Hanukkah. But I will say that I have dated many people that celebrate Christmas. I've celebrated many a Christmas. I've had trees in my house. Um, so in the event of a Christmas tree, I will blast NSYNC um, holiday album. Big fan. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Um, Dolly Parton. Uh, I love Christmas music. I love that time of year. Um, I get super into it. So what was it like to kind of do a Christmas, a whole Christmas themed like project like this? Like, it was so fun. I mean, I've actually never shot a holiday film. So it was really fun to like shoot the eggnog scenes and go to a set where, you know, even though it's September, um, you know, we're making a full Christmas tree lot and everything's festive. It really, it was a really joyous place to, you know, work for, for a month or so. Mm -hmm. And did filming like a feature length, did that adjust the way that you approach the character or, or not really? Not so much only because it just felt like shooting two episodes. Mm -hmm. That's basically the length and the shooting length. So, you know, it just felt like we were shooting a two episode special. Mm -hmm. Um, I know it's very different for Austin and in his writing, you know, process, but for, for the playing of it, it was so straightforward. I love the adaptation of making it a Christmas movie, but still really having that Zoe's heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was well, well executed. Mm -hmm. And for you, because sort of the series leaves off with you being able to hear Zoe's heart song and the, the film really gets into that. Um, and so what was it like for you to play that? Because one of the questions that I asked Jane and she never gave me a proper answer. So I'll ask you when you have to stand there and have somebody sing to you and sort of be like sort of taking that in. How do you <laughs> calibrate that aspect of the performance? Yeah. Well, I used to say this about Jane all the time. I used to consider every single song we ever did on Zoe's as a duet because Jane was so active and a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and she was active in the um, conceit of it, in what made sense to her. Um, I know sometimes if she was available, she would kind of weigh in on the choreography or the, or the blocking of it. Um, and I tried to follow her lead with that. I, I, you're just a scene partner, hearing something actually happen um in your real life and so it was a pleasure to sit back relax listen and engage mm -hmm. and having sort of being on the other side of things did that change the way that you then did any of your own performances like I mean maybe it informed it a little bit but I mean no because you're on either side of the equation so I'm not thinking about what the other person's hearing when I'm singing it because I would be blissfully ignorant of that. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when you're listening, it's the same thing. You, they, you, they, they don't know that you can hear them. So you're just actively participating. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the big lessons that like came out of this for your character, and I think for anyone watching is like, you know, you want to help when you see somebody struggling and sometimes maybe the best ways to not take as much of an active approach and let people come to you and I think that that is a really beautiful lesson and I just wonder your thoughts on that and if that has sort of maybe seeped into your own life if the, or if there's anything that you sort of took away from this switch with your character yeah I think it's like you know I personally wouldn't want the responsibility of the power because I like to use my intuition to guide me more so than you know a secret um because that could feel very manipulative so um 
I can't think of a scenario where I would be like Zoe or in this case, Max. Um, but yeah, I just try to not impart my own experience on someone else's. Mm. So if, if it's giving a friend advice on dating or mental health, I just try to remain neutral and really be there for them and consider their environment and their um, life experience, you know, so I could properly give the right advice because um, I happen to give people advice and I happen to get advice. Um, so I'm lucky that I have close friends like that. Our audience and, you know, these kinds of things don't really know just how much work goes into what you guys do. So can you give me some sort of timetable about like how much time you had, how much prep you had and what the actual on the ground like shooting process was like? It was pretty quick for the movie. I mean, it was always very fast and, and mm -hmm. serious. We do six songs an episode. So um, with this, I mean, Austin wrote this thing in a few weeks. We were up there within moments of, of hearing about the film. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Mandy and, and our choreographer and uh, Austin do so much work on understanding the conceit of each number and then putting it on its feet is something that we get to be involved in. The pre-records are just, you know, an hour or so, not even of, of, of giving the raw materials for them to then produce. And then, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, was, it was a pretty dialed in system, mm -hmm. but it's always fast. It's always uh, furious and, 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 and hard working. Mm -hmm. And, and how did you feel sort of watching it and again, getting so much good feedback? Like, I think this is one of the most watched things in Roku history. Like it just blew up and um, brought in a whole other new audience to the show. Like what's that been like for you? We're really grateful for Roku as a service and um, just the amount of eyeballs they have and how much they promoted us and put us forward. I mean, I, I still see ads for the movie in New York. Um, mm -hmm sometimes um so yeah we're, we're so proud that they that they noticed the potential in continuing this story and um i think it was a win-win for both sides and skylar what are you working on now anything that you're able to talk about <laughs> yeah well i'm currently um doing eight shows a week in new york doing little shop of horrors um playing seymour and i have a new show coming to uh, cbs this fall called So Help Me Todd uh, with myself and Marcia Gay Harden. Nice. Um, and is there anything that I didn't ask you about that, that you wanted to, any challenging moments that is important for you to highlight, anything like that? I think anytime, you know, making something and everyone coming together, and especially when there's a special aspect like mu a musical, mm -hmm. um, you have to kind of harness that um, opportunity to do something that I always used to say on big musical days, like, this is why our show is different. This is why we get to, you know, this is what makes our show special. And while it is challenges, um, it's an opportunity to do something different on TV. And that's um, invaluable. Has your Zoe experience sort of bled into what you're doing on Broadway now? Do you sort of feel like? I think it's both. I think my um, Broadway experience prepared me yeah. for it. And, you know, anytime I'm on stage, I always feel sharpened for the next project. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to me again. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get to see you again.